Islands of the Bahamas, ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. The following portion of the news is brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. Good evening and welcome to The Bahamas Tonight, the National Report. I'm Keishal Adderley. Thanks for joining us. A man on his way to work was shot dead today. The early morning incident took place on East Street and Andrus Avenue. Now we must warn you, this, gra this video is somewhat graphic. This is the scene police found this morning. The victim, still clad in his overalls, was unofficially identified by co-workers as Stephen Williams, an employee of Bahamas Waste. Police say Williams was robbed and shot shortly after leaving his home. When family members arrived on the scene this morning, their anguish was clear. They declared declined on-camera interviews but told ZNS News Williams was a happy young man who was not known for being problematic. Investigations are ongoing. Well, just hours before that murder, authorities were on the scene of another homicide, but this time an apparent robber was left fatally wounded. Our Andrew Knowles was at the scene when an alleged robber got more than he bargained for. His body lay face down in a pool of blood just outside the place police say he intended to rob. The alleged culprit was shot and killed in a shootout Wednesday evening by the Palm Tree supermarket manager. Chief of the Central Detective Unit, Superintendent Paul Roll, says it all occurred around 6.30 yesterday evening when two gunmen wearing dark clothing and masks entered the supermarket filled with patrons demanding cash. The store owner and manager who was inside the store at the time produced his license shotgun where he engaged the both of these suspects. The one of the suspects opened fire and there was an exchange of gunfire in the in the process. One of the suspects was fatally shot. As you can see and, uh, he collapsed at the door of the store. A second suspect was able to make good his escape. However, Superintendent Roll could not confirm to our news team whether the second suspect was shot as well. But we were told that police did recover a weapon. We have on the scene uh, what appears to be a 9mm pistol. The second suspect, who is also um, may have made got his escape with his, his firearm. Just last week, Tuesday, another culprit was shot and killed after attempting to rob the John Shea food store. And while police are not promoting vigilante justice, it seems business owners are taking justice into their own hands. Well, we encourage people to, to take steps to protect their premises. And, uh, and if that's what it, it takes, so be it. But I, I do believe that the this Bahamas, you know, is a, a peaceful place and we'd like to keep it that way. Meantime, police are now on the hunt for the second culprit involved in the incident. Andrew Knowles, ZNS Network News. Amidst the Christmas season, businesses are safeguarding themselves against theft and armed robbery, and this includes getting the assistance from the police. Commissioner of Police, Alison Greenslade, on that. Businesses are doing precisely what we'd like them to do. They have been writing to my office and they've been seeking our advice and guidance. We have a private uh, fees engagement um, act. Members of the force that are off duty can return to work um, fully armed with police resources and turn up at a business, legitimate business, a legitimate business with the full support and approval of the commissioner and work a full shift. That has produce tremendous benefits for businesses and for members of the organization. And it's something that I applaud. It is managed from my office. And I wish to clearly say that I'm very pleased with the way it's being, it's being conducted. Meantime, the commissioner is warning business persons against taking matters into their own hands. Guns in the hands of members of the public are illegal. The only people authorized to have guns are police officers duly authorized, members of the Defense Force, Immigration, Customs, and Prisons duly authorized, and anyone with a permit or permit from the Commissioner of Police. Anyone else with a gun in their hand is playing with their life. The Commissioner is not going to sugarcoat that. I'm not going to make excuses or apologies for it. I am armed every day you see me. I am trained to use a weapon. Every member of my executive management team all of our officers are trained. We are not going to allow a Bahamian public to be held hostage by a core group of political offenders who do not wish to find gainful employment.
if you take upon yourself a weapon or any other offensive or dangerous instrument but if you're to hurting someone there's a good chance you might just be walking into a police officer and a letter of the law will be applied in other news tonight, Andre Brabal, the former teacher convicted of unlawful sex with two boys, will get a new trial. The High Court handed down the decision today. Fern Curry explains how the court has justified this decision. Convicted child molester Andre Burbal will get a second chance to present his case to jurors. This after the Court of Appeal quashed his conviction and 35-year prison sentence a short while ago. The 50-year-old Trinidadian teacher was imprisoned after a jury convicted him of eight counts of unnatural sexual intercourse with two of his high school male students. In a written judgment delivered by Justice Stanley John, the court cited what it described as two important grounds of Burbal's appeal. The issue of corroboration and good character. Burbal had argued earlier that the Supreme Court judge did not properly direct the jury on the issue of corroboration in the trial, noting that his two male accusers went to the same school, took the same classes, and lived in the same small community on Grand Bahama. The court agreed, noting that there was no direction by the judge asking the jury to consider the possibility of collusion or contamination in light of the allegation of improper motive namely money. The court also noted that the Supreme Court judge failed to give a good character direction with regard to Burbal and therefore fell into error, resulting in a serious miscarriage of justice. The court then allowed Burbal's appeal, quashed his sentence and conviction, and ordered a retrial here in Nassau at the earliest possible time. Meantime, Andre Burbal will remain behind bars at Fox Hill Prison. Fern Carey, ZNS Network News. There's more tonight from another former member of the National Insurance Board of Directors on those big bonuses awarded to some NIB executives, including NIB Director Algernon Cargill. Belinda Wilson, who served on the board, chaired by Patrick Ward, between 2000 or in 2010, says after hearing about the fiasco, she was forced to review emails and minutes from board meetings to see if there was something she missed. I want to state emphatically that I do not recall, I am not aware of bonuses being discussed at the board level. I want to say that I'm not aware of any executives who would have received bonuses. I want to state clearly and unequivocally that I, Belinda Wilson, did not receive any bonus from the National Insurance Board. I want to state that the only funds that I would have received over a two-year period would have been the $360 that we were given as a sitting fee. Now, Wilson says she too was surprised to hear about the nearly $200,000 in bonuses awarded to Mr. Cargill. Wilson, also president of the teachers' union, says while she's a firm advocate for rewarding employees, she would not have approved those exorbitant bonuses. I think the Bahamian purse has been robbed, actually. And if the allegations prove to be true, and I think that if they have, have breached any of the policies or their contracts, then those funds should be placed back into NIB. Is the people's funds not being spent?